This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armies Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, he's going to be taking a look at the weapons of Far Cry 2, complete with all the outrageous jamming and exploding gun animations. So in this detonation animation, the entire front end of the gun has blown off, which I don't think is likely. If there are any other games, guns and mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one, and if you'd like to help out the Royal Armies Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Right, we have a slight variation on the 1911 theme here, and it's one of these, the Star Model B. Now, in the sort of idle uh, sort of, or opening animation, we saw the player character thumb the hammer back and then manually decock it. Good start. But then, as soon as he starts firing, the hammer stays where it is. So the hammer, you know, the developers are aware of the hammer and how the hammer functions to fire each cartridge. What they've misunderstood here is that, well, two things really. Firstly, this is a single action pistol, so pulling the trigger does not cock the hammer. And secondly, even if it was a double action trigger, once you fired the first shot, the gun cocks itself. The ejection port is on the wrong side. This is one of those games that suffers from left-handed syndrome, which, um, as we, we think we've discovered, may originate in the Counter-Strike series of games. Another mistake is that the slide never locks open, which it should do on this pistol and most other pistols. And we've already seen several examples of a, a jammed slide. Probably not a super common malfunction. Generally, if the cartridge fires, all of that energy has to go somewhere. And generally that's, some of it's going out the front for obvious reasons, and some of it is cycling the slide. So that would have to be fairly badly rusted shut to not actually cycle. And once you've broke the rust free, Almost certainly it is going to cycle after that. It's a good effort to introduce deterioration. You can visibly see that the model is rusted, it's not, not in, in a good state. Would it complete a full cycle and properly extract, eject and load the next round? Quite possibly not. And that would be the sort of malfunction that I would expect to see. Not the slide jammed shut, but the slide not moving smoothly enough to allow the weapon to function correctly. Yeah, so once some, once a gun deteriorates to the point where it's jamming frequently, clearly it lets go in a spectacular fashion. So if you look closely, you'll see that the, the, the way the model comes apart doesn't make full sense. There's a big chunk missing out of the chamber that doesn't look like it's damaged. It looks like it's modeled that way. The barrel stays on the gun as though it was a fixed barrel blowback firearm. Whereas in fact, on this thing, it's a, it's a John Browning style tilting barrel. And if the gun were to blow up that to that extent that the slide goes flying off, pretty sure the barrel is coming with it. I mean, it's, uh, it's inserted into the slide for one thing. So the whole thing would, would just come off and you'd be left holding the frame. But that said, uh, I've never seen a game model a uh, catastrophic failure of a firearm at all, so they deserve points for that. So it might seem like heresy, but uh, Kalashnikov pattern rifles are also capable of jamming. Um, an interesting mixture of yanking on the cocking handle, not a bad idea, and tugging on the magazine, not going to achieve anything. The magazine on the AK is locked into the weapon, tapping on it, banging on it, not going to do anything. Hitting the charging handle, absolutely. You would probably go from yanking on the charging handle to uh, what they call mortaring it, where you stick your thumb over the cocking handle and bang the butt into the deck, and that gives you the inertia necessary to overcome the stock. Bolt. So it looks kind of, it's like action movie level plausibility of like, um, I don't know, uh, Back to the Future where uh, the uh, the terrorist with his AK gets a jam and he just starts, starts sort of slapping the gun in frustration. It's, it's a, better than that, but um, it's not realistically modelled. But again, the fact that they have gone to the effort to try to model weapon deterioration and failures is, is still pretty impressive. <laughs> Okay, so I've got the AK 
catastrophically exploding in front of me. It is freeze framed at a point where what I'm seeing is our artifacts of the 3D model. So what I think is meant to be the bolt is actually just a thin sheet with a handle on the end of it. It should be a solid chunk of metal or a chunk of it if it's, if it's somehow blown up that badly. The top cover has come off in, in one piece, which makes sense. But then underneath, you've got this shelf. So above the fire selector, um, it, it should be a, a U-shaped bit of metal with the trigger mechanism sitting inside it. There's none of that. Interestingly, they've textured that flat shelf that shouldn't exist, and I don't know why, other than I suppose it would be glaringly obvious if it was just white. Um, so uh, superficially, doesn't look a million miles away from some of the, or the very few occasions I've seen videos of AKs exploding. But the bolt is not modeled as a bolt. It's just, a, it's basic, looks like a cover and it slides within the 3D model. The Ingram Model 10 submachine gun. I like the rate of fire, I quite like the way it's been implemented. We get a good view here of um, what a, a deteriorated gun looks like in the game, that kind of attractive patina all over it. And we get to see another another explosion animation and uh, I can see a, a nod to a, ch a barrel chamber in the now completely empty ejection port. Like the bolt has somehow exited the weapon out of its own ejection port, which is impossible. The cocking handle has disappeared, but the bolt wouldn't magically leave the gun. Maybe it's somehow just destroyed the spring and is stuck in the back of the receiver. I don't know, but I have a feeling it's blown out of the gun. Uh, we've now got uh, the FN FAL or something similar to it. Doesn't look quite right. There's something a little cursed about this model. The butt stock looks like it's almost like shark skin or something. The handguard's made out of the same stuff and it's just like weirdly puffy. Don't know, it almost looks upholstered. Yeah, ironically, the mirroring of guns, the flipping of the model in this means that the otherwise very ergonomic for its day FAL where you can use the cocking handle on the left hand side and the ejections out the right is not a thing and the right handed player is having to reach over the receiver like an AK to cock it which is the other way around, the AK has that problem so that's just a quirk of the way they've mirrored what it looks like is every gun in the game So in this detonation animation, the entire front end of the gun has blown off. Don't think is likely. Barrels are either uh, threaded in and torqued up to a certain spec, or they are pressed in an extremely tight fit, meaning that it's more likely that the back end of the gun, the receiver that's sheet metal or thin machine metal, is more likely to give way than the relationship between the barrel and the barrel extension or the trunnion or whatever the, whatever the barrel is attached to. So it's not a hugely probable way of a gun exploding. So an extremely shiny looking Desert Eagle that uh, the player looks very proud of and even gives a little, little polish to. Most of the main sort of angles on the gun are there. You definitely get the idea. But I think the very the very front end, this, this that sort of iconic muzzle, I don't think they've quite nailed the look of that. But it is close enough. Um, this is recognizably one. They're not doing a soldier of fortune on it and trying to make it look like something completely different. The whole thing is really lethargic as well. So when you shoot this thing, you know you've shot it. It pivots up very, very quickly. Uh, it doesn't kind of slowly come up like Clint Eastwood miming the recoil of his Magnum, which is what I'm seeing here. And the slide moves faster than your eye can see. A very common mistake in video game models is that you see a slide or a bolt moving as though it's slowed down. Right, so the, the Deagle is no more. The Deagle has exploded. Um, and I think that's probably the more realistic of the explosion animations that I've seen so far in that it might happen that way. The slide coming off, in this case, the barrel is not in the slide, so the, the barrel does stay fixed to the gun. That's part of its design, and it would only be the slide itself that would come off the back of the gun. 
our old friend the Spas 12 or something close to it uh, we have got more than just a stuck bolt or slide we are seeing a stovepipe jam a failure to eject so you see the red plastic hull of the uh, 12 gauge case stuck in the gun it appears to be stuck between the face of the bolt and the ejection port which could happen I think and then we see some reasonable attempts to clear that by yanking on the cocking handles, turning the gun over and slapping it. Not so helpful, because if it's compressed between a, the bolt and the gun, it's not going to just drop free when you slap it. You do need to hold the bolt open and do that to try to get that uh, empty case out of the gun. This is a slightly cursed RPG-7. The iron sights are for some reason on the side of the, of the launch tube, they should be on the top. So this is one of the few weapons in the game that's not mirrored, but to make up for the fact that it's not back to front, the player is holding it back to front. So he's made the rookie error, and perhaps that's because his character is not familiar with the type, I don't know, of holding the grips the wrong way round. The munition itself launches like a rocket, rather than shooting out of the end like like a large bullet and then the rocket motor kicking in uh, so we see the with the reload animation we see the warhead being loaded it doesn't quite look right they haven't just got the warhead portion which is a mistake other games have made they have got the tail fin on there but it doesn't look right it doesn't have the flick out the long flick out stabilizing vein fins that should be there which should be under a cardboard sheath to keep them in place, which just blows off when the thing is fired. And I think I don't think we should have that much recoil. There's there's virtually no recoil from an RPG. You'll see some if there's some damage to the, either the warhead or the or the launcher, and it's not balanced correctly. You'll see perhaps a little bit of movement, but this is modelling recoil more recoil than we'd expect to see from a recoilless weapon, which is what the RPG-7 actually is. Right, uh, so we don't, luckily for the player, the RPG doesn't explode. I guess they figured that um, that would be, that would just take you out, <laughs> which is true. So instead we see a sort of dud round modelled where it kind of plops out of the end and then fizzles around on the floor for a bit before exploding. I don't know if that's plausible or not with a, with a PG-7 round. Don't think so though, because it would take, it's 15 meters down range before the motor kicks in, which means it would just sit there as a dud. Shouldn't explode because its uh, nose hasn't been crushed and it wouldn't have armed yet. So it should just sit there being a bit of a risk as a piece of unexploded ordnance and you just stick another one in and carry on. I don't think it could possibly do what it does there, but it makes for some dramatic gameplay as you try to get the hell away from your rogue bomb, essentially. I think the M79 makes a lot of sense for an open, you know, relatively open world game like this, giving you a bit of distance, but something to bridge the gap between an RPG and a firearm. We don't seem to be using the sights, it's just a kind of a dead reckoning, point it in the vague direction of the enemy, learn your fall of shot kind of thing. You can tell that the, the modelers have not got hands on a real one, or just aren't worrying about that level of detail, because the, the, the break open latch just is, is stays to one side, and then the gun opens, whereas it works like a shotgun, you hold it against spring pressure and break it open that way. All right, so I was waiting for this to happen. We've got a point blank, or that's not the correct definition of point blank, uh, but it's not the time or the place. Firing of an M79 into somebody and it blows up. Now it's designed to not do that. It has an arming distance, minimum arming distance for safety purposes. Some you know, blunt force trauma from a large bullet hitting you but not a penetrating wound, hopefully, and not an explosion, unless something's gone horribly wrong. At this point in gaming history, I don't think that level of uh, realism had been picked up upon just yet.
Okay, this thing is weird. This looks like somebody saw an AR-15 once and then tried to make a video game gun based upon it. The bolt appears to be part of the receiver or there's some weird kind of cover going on that doesn't work like, a, like an AR normally would. It's got the M16A1 onwards forward assist but it's weirdly tiny and isn't in a position where I think it would necessarily work, not with this weird bolt anyway. And then the cocking handle is this bizarre looking bit of sheet metal that's also really small. Yeah, very strange. You can see you can see features of AR that have been sort of mutated into something else. So we've got some sort of a failure to extract. And they're removing the magazine, they're pulling the cocking handle to the rear. All, so far so good. But then they're pressing the forward assist, which would be counterproductive because that's a forward assist, not a rearward assist. And would therefore be acting against you trying to pull the bolt to the rear to clear the stoppage. But at least they recognised that the forward assist is useful when the weapon fails to function correctly, even if they've combined the wrong malfunctions. So we've got our good old friend, the MP5 SD, integrally suppressed MP5. Reasonable sound effect, actually. Uh, the first thing I'm struck by, though, is the use of the iron sights. So that the rear drum is turned to the short-range battle sight, open V notch, but then we are not using that notch. We're looking straight over the top of it, and we're just looking at the front post. So this is a misunderstanding of how the iron sights actually work. You don't put the post level with the sight protector, you put it level with the top of the V-notch. In case anyone's wondering, you can in fact reload an MP5 like that, i.e. replace the magazine, cock the weapon. It's just difficult to do because the spring tension from a full 30 round magazine bears on the bottom of the bolt and it's hard to get that magazine to click into place. It seems a little anemic. I think that's probably a gameplay balance choice that this is suppressed and producing subsonic velocities through the integral suppressor. Therefore, they've dialed down the damage, because otherwise you just use this all the time. And I'm going to have to pause immediately at the really not very well modelled rounds and belt on this FN Minimi. They are single modelled pieces of brass with no distinct bullet and the belt looks like a leather belt running through the middle of the cartridges. There is extremely little detail on these, which wouldn't be a problem, this is a relatively old game, if, I've just picked up my gun animation, wasn't showing you it front and centre, right in your face, drawing attention to not the best bit of 3D modelling or texturing I have ever seen. It sort of impresses as a, as a game like Machine Gun, good, you know, re realistic rate of fire, you can get the sense of power that, that comes with a light machine gun. And the muzzle flash I think is quite well done for the time. Uh, it's not overwhelming but it has that uh, classic star pattern. Um, we see the, the jamming animation, something new. Weirdly, the top cover pops open and sits there and unjamming it consists of smacking it on the top until the top cover latches home again and the gun just magically then starts firing. There's no attempt to clear the actual stoppage, there's no cocking and if your top cover wasn't latching down, just repeatedly smacking it, it's probably not the way to do it. You need to lift that thing open, unload, clear the weapon, verify that things are in the right um, configuration, nothing's damaged, and then essentially load it again and crack on and hope it works. We've got a left-handed gun, because this is how the game depicts the guns, but a right-handed shooter, and so um, he's having to do very much what um, very skilled left-handed shooters do, and they keep their hand on the on the wrist, and they essentially lift the gun up, work the bolt, and then catch it on the way back down. Somehow, this clip-fed bolt-action repeating rifle is being loaded and unloaded using clips from underneath. Yes, with a scope mounted, you can't use the charger guide to load a clip in. You would open the bolt and single load rounds with a sniper variant. You do not and cannot load it with clips from underneath. That is a flat floor plate containing the spring that you need to force the rounds up for 
feeding, you can't just jam rounds up there. Well guys, you asked for it, we gave it to you. The Guns of Far Cry 2, complete with comedy jamming and explodey animations. Which I think was a really nice effort actually, but interesting to dig into. You can wait for the next episode of this series, uh, or you can head over, or, and, or you can head over to the Royal Armouries YouTube channel and uh, catch a series that I've been doing over there. If you'd like to support us at the museum, we've got links up in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you again next time.